Hi there everyone, Josiah here with Womp Rat Creations and for this week's build video, I am going to be rebuilding this uh, Mobius model that I made. Now the reason being is um, if you watch the show and tell that I did for this, you'll know that I, I made this model a long time ago and one of the most important lessons that I learned in building this was that I need to be more patient. The thing that I learned I needed to be patient with with this build is painting. Um, I rushed through the paint job on this and in doing so, I was putting paint over paint that wasn't dry and so it, it resulted in all these cracks throughout the entire model, which is okay. It's, I mean, I could, go through and kind of work that into the design and do some weathering to kind of tie it together. But I mean, why do that when I can just remake it and uh, take you guys through some basic model making techniques, which I've kind of done with the Death Star Turbo Laser, but that was really big and um, while it was pretty basic, it's not necessarily what most model makers do with their um, when they're making uh, their typical models. Typical models are much more like this. This is just styrene. There's no wood frame or anything. And so that's what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to remake this. Uh, it's essentially going to stay the same basic uh, shape. This is based off of a ship from a Mobius comic. Um, that is just, I think, a really, really cool looking little speeder type deal. And, um, well, I mean, I don't think it's really a speeder in the comic. It looks more like some kind of uh, platform that can be raised. It actually has an arm coming out of the bottom that looks like it, it attaches to some other bigger vessel. But for our purposes, it's gonna kind of be like a speeder deal. It's not gonna be um, attached to any other uh, vehicle. So I'm going to be rebuilding this. We're going to do it bigger and I'm going to pay much more attention to the paint job so that I don't make the same mistake twice. So I need to get out some some styrene, my exacto blade, a straight edge or two, and that should be, and my calipers. I'm gonna get out my calipers too. Yeah, that should be it for, uh, for getting started. So, all right. The reason that I love model making like this is it really is just an exercise in shapes. So, um, when I was making this model, I was looking at the, uh, the, the comic that I was using as a concept art um, to, uh, to just look at shapes uh, that I could see in the, uh, in the ship. So, of course, on the side is probably the weirdest shape in this whole thing. It's this kind of uh, almost like a C. Um, it has this space in the middle and then, uh, you know, everything else is essentially just some kind of square or rectangle. So this is one of the reasons that I really love this ship is because it's a very basic model. You don't need a vacuum former. There's no, um, there's no complex curves to this. It's a pretty straightforward shape. Um, so I figured that would be a great way to take you guys through some uh, kind of a basic model making uh, like 101 class on this. So let's get started. I'm just going to be, like I said, getting my measurements directly from this model and adding like two inches to all of my measurements so that it's essentially the same ratio. It's just a little bigger.
Okay, so I have cut out, I think, all of the pieces for the main body of this model. And as you can see, they're pretty basic shapes. They're essentially just a couple of rectangles of varying sizes. And then the only ones that are a little bit more involved are these. These are the side pieces for the, uh, for the model, but I mean, these are also pretty simple shapes. This is what I love about modeling, is you can start from a flat sheet of plastic or cardboard or whatever. You can use really any material that you want and uh, just start with some really basic shapes and you can create something that is uh, really interesting and really, really fun. Um, this is, I think, one of the um, one of the coolest things that this is my favorite way to make honestly out, out of all of the different stuff that i've done so far this is my favorite just scratch building a model is it's it's always fun it's always fun i never get even when i get a little frustrated with something going through this process it's more of a uh an interesting challenge than anything else. I never get like upset modeling. It's a good time. I really enjoy it. But so now I have all of my base structures cut out. Now I need to start gluing them together. And the way that I'm going to do that is uh, something that I do quite often uh, when assembling things like this. I'll use tape. I actually did this um, same method when I was building the Death Star Turbo Laser uh, Tower. Um, I used tape to uh, fix two pieces together and then that kind of creates a hinge that I can use to make sure that it stays in the spot that I want while I'm gluing it down. And uh, so I'm gonna put down a couple pieces of tape and then use some super glue to get uh, everything set in the position I want. And then I'm going to go through with some weld um, on the on the joints on the outside just to make sure that it's a really strong hold. But when I'm modeling like this, I like to set everything with the super glue so I know it's in the right position and then I'll follow it up with some weld on. That's just my personal preference. It isn't necessary, but it's the way I like to do things. And you can really use any kind of tape for this. In fact, it might be a better idea to use uh, some kind of rubber tape, like maybe electric tape, something with a little bit of stretch to it. Um, but I mean, this masking tape is pretty cheap and it works fine. I've never had a real issue with it and you don't want something that's going to be real difficult to uh, to remove later. That's the great thing about masking tape. It's meant to be removable. It's not supposed to be a permanent adhesive. All right, so I have my two side pieces taped onto the sides, and now I'm try to make sure the angle is okay for you guys. I'm gonna fold each side up, and this is where having a uh, like a rubber um, tape might come in handy because it gives a little bit of stretch, but. As you can see, the masking tape is working out fine. I get it set up, and then I go through on the seam with some super glue, just enough to get it set in place. And I realized that I still haven't picked up any, um, any kicking spray for the, the Instaset spray for my super glue, which is usually, I mean, just 
invaluable when you're uh, when you're doing models like these. Having the ability to essentially instantly set your super glue and not have to sit here holding two pieces together for a while it's just so nice once you once you get in that mode that um, that workflow this just feels like an eternity okay looks like that's set up enough that I can do the other side am I gluing this to my table Eh, just a little bit. That's all right. Not a huge deal. All right, let's get this pulled up. So I have a couple pieces in place and I want to go ahead and go through, start going through with some weld on. And so I transfer some, eh, that's enough. Transfer some into my little half a soda can here. Take my brush and just very lightly go along the seams where two pieces meet. And this stuff works re pretty quickly. So uh, you typically don't want to revisit an area that you've already brushed some onto because um, it'll eat through the plastic so quickly that your brush will actually leave uh, an indention in the plastic, which requires you to go back with either filler or just sanding to kind of clean it up. It's kind of a pain. It's kind of a pain. You don't want to, you don't want to deal with that if you don't have to. It's easily avoidable by just doing one, one pass. That's all you need. It'll work its way into the, um, into the small crack that's there and join the two pieces. So what you're doing with weld on is this is a welding agent. So, uh, this is a solvent that specifically, this is weld on number three. So this weld on is specifically suited for, uh, styrene, this, um, family of plastics and it slightly melts both sides of what you're joining and um, and so when they're done melting they kind of melt together so you're creating a welded bond between the two pieces which is a lot better than just the normal uh, like super glue because super glue I mean I'm sure all of you have had plenty of experience with super glue it's easy relatively easy to, uh, to pull those two pieces apart afterwards which is something that you don't want to deal with when you're modeling so this weld on stuff is invaluable you just got to make sure that you get the right kind for the type of plastic you're working with okay so I've reached a point here in my assembly that this is why it's important to think about your order of operations. I've reached a part in the assembly where I have the, uh, the bottom section, there's this little empty space right here and I have the bottom section of it and the back uh, to it installed. Now, when I go to put the next piece in, that's going to go uh, between these two pieces at the top of this uh, center piece, um, I'm not going to have easy access to this area. So before I put that in, I'm going to add a little bit of detail, a little bit of greebly type detail 
to this surface because I do want to have some detail up in there even though it's not going to be the easiest thing to see um, but uh, it's going to be hard to do once I put this next piece in so I'm going to take care of that right now and all I'm going to do I think is, uh, is cut some strips of uh, styrene rod that'll uh, go long ways down this and then I can put this next piece in and move on with the actual structure assembly of this. Alright guys, I am done with the main body of the model and it's looking really good. I'll uh, pull up the old one for reference. So it's obviously a bit bigger, but I was able to keep about the same ratio uh, throughout this, which I'm pretty pleased with. So now the next real step is adding greeblies and surface detail. but um, before I can do that, I'm going to go through with some spot putty and fill uh, some of the very small cracks in between the, uh, the joints of uh, where I join the different pieces of styrene together. It's not completely necessary. This is assembled actually pretty well. There's no severe gaps, uh, but it's just an extra step to make sure that this is going to look really nice afterwards. So I have my spot putty and a little piece of uh, the front of a old notebook that I'm going to use to mix this on. And yes, I'm still working through this two part uh, spot putty and Still not a fan. I really miss my one part spot putty. Oh man, that was a lot of cream, uh, hardener. That's going to kick really fast. Exactly why I don't like the cream hardener. Or, I'm sorry, the two part uh, spot putty. I just, it's too hard for me to get just a small amount of the hardener and not just dump a ton on there. Look at that. That's already, it's already hardened. It's too much hardener. How many times do I need to learn that lesson? Be careful with the hardener. You don't need much. Okay, but, um, I'm still not sure. God damn it. Okay. I don't know what is going on with you. It's obviously separated a little bit. And so a bunch of liquid came out. And now I'm not really sure if I want to use that or not. I'm going to add a little more. Try to mix this up a little bit beforehand. More liquid. Are you just crapping out on me? Is that what's happening? God. 
I hate this stuff. I hate it. It's overly complicated. Why would you even make a two-part system if you have a one-part system? And then not label it differently on the package to trick people into buying it. I'm not even going to use that pile anymore. <sighs> I need a new mixing pad. Let's try this again, shall we? This is supposed to be an easy build. I don't want to deal with all these problems. I don't want them. I'm just filling cracks. That's it. Okay, let's see. Are you going to spit out nothing again? Nope, nope. Actual hardener. There we go. All right. We are back on track. All right. I think this is done. I have the body of the model complete, and now I can get onto some Greeblies. I'm excited for this part. All right. Now, this, is, this part is almost as fun as, uh, as actually putting the Greeblies on. Going through the massive amount of Greeblies that I have, and trying to decide which ones I'm going to use. And I don't, I can't say that I have any real, um, any real process for this. Uh, there's not a, uh, a form of thinking that I try to stick to in doing this. I just, I just pick through and find little pieces that I like that, I don't know, for one reason or another, I feel like could go on the model that I'm, that I'm putting together. And most of the time, I usually take out more than I'm actually gonna use, and then I can kind of pick from that pile as I go, as I'm putting the Greeblies on. But I guess, so I guess this first round of selection is just kind of, narrowing it down a little bit from all of this to a small handful of stuff. And then once I go to actually putting Greeblies on, I'll pick from that pile, but not necessarily use everything in that pile. This might take a while, so, you know, you guys can, uh, I'll just meet you on the other side of this. How's that? All right, so I think this is about all the Greeblies that I'm going to be pulling from. Like I said, I'm probably not going to use all of these, but I'm definitely going to use mostly these. I Sometimes, even after I get it to this point, I go back to the bag and start digging once I have a few things on the piece. But now I can start cutting some of these out and gluing them on. Let's go to a time lapse.
right guys, all of the Greeblies are on and I gotta say, this is looking really, really cool. I, for a minute there, I got a little worried because I felt like I might have been overdoing the Greeblies, but I think I struck a nice balance. I think this is gonna turn out really, really cool. I even hit this with a coat of light gray for the base. So now, obviously, I need to dirty this up a little bit and do some small detail painting. And we're gonna do that all in one big montage. But I do wanna point out that uh, I've shown you guys the way that I'll typically uh, do washes on a project, and that is just watering down a acrylic paint covering the whole thing and then wiping the majority of it off so that only a little bit is left in the tiny crevices and cracks and stuff like that. This time I'm going to be doing a much more precise weathering, a much more precise wash with paints that are actually made for uh, applying washes to models. So I'm going to be doing some uh, some small detail painting with a brush or probably even some of my paint pens uh, for some of the Greeblies. And then I'm going to hit everything with a couple of nice washes and this should turn out really nice. I am, I'm excited for this. Let's get to it. you guys I am finished I'm calling it this is done and just take a take a second to look at the uh, the size difference between these I was able to keep about the same uh, ratios the same relationships of, uh, of measurements throughout these two models but uh, I made it quite a big a bit bigger in the new one and I am super happy with it. I was getting a little worried at one point that I was kind of overdoing it with the Greeblies. Um, I spent like a day doing the Greeblies on this, trying to come up with cool uh, patterns and you know just placing different pieces together that um, I thought would make interesting shapes or uh, designs. And I think this came out really, really nicely.
Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments. Hopefully you guys learned something new or uh, maybe uh, just kind of got a different perspective on something that you are already familiar with. Um, thank you guys for sticking around for another build. This one was a pretty quick and easy build, which is really nice. As you all know, I'm still uh, you know, getting settled in the new shop and getting back in the swing of things as far as filming, because I don't know if any of you guys are, are doing something similar, but I found that if I don't do this all the time, then I get pretty rusty pretty quick. And it doesn't help that I haven't been doing this very long. I'm still pretty new at this. So, um, yeah, if I step away from this for really any amount of time at all, um, I kind of have to shake the, shake the dust off. So you guys are kind of, uh, you know, dealing with that the same way as me. We're, we're getting back in the groove of things here. But thank you guys so much for sticking around for another build. Make sure that you hit that subscribe and uh, the subscribe button. And if you are already subscribed, please consider heading over to our Patreon. The link will be down in the description. There's some really cool stuff there for you and it's a great way for you to help support the channel. And if you don't subscribe and you don't go check out our Patreon, you don't have to join it, but go check it out. If you don't subscribe and you don't check out our Patreon, you will leave me no choice but to plan a trip to Hoth, plan a trek from one pole to the other. I'll circumvent the entire planet on foot and purposely not plan for any kind of shelter so that every night I have to slice open a tauntaun, a, a new different tauntaun every night, slice it open and take shelter inside of it. Do you want the blood of all of those tauntauns on your hands? I don't think so. So hit the subscribe button, check us out on Patreon. You're doing me a big favor just by hitting the subscribe button, really. I really appreciate all of your guys' support so far. There's some other cool links down in the description. You can check those out. I think that's it. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.